giving us another Christmas season to celebrate together. And Lord, I pray that not only today or on Christmas Day, but all the time, Lord, we open our hearts and minds to you. We appreciate the wonderful gift you've given us by coming to this earth and living and dying and rising again. Lord, please help us to appreciate this. Help us to understand the gravity of, of everything that's going on you know, and why we need to be the Christians you've created us to be, why we need to be bold in our witness, why we need to be willing to step out and share our stories of our relationship with you. Just help us with this today, dear Lord. Help us to remember you, to honor you, to cherish you in everything. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. If everyone would please stand. We've got a responsive reading. If you have your bulletin, if you don't want to read from the screen, you're more than welcome to read from your bulletin. It's everything in the bold print in the bulletin. We will, read the, we will read the part at the top all together, and then we will do the invocation and have another short reading after that. Let us read. Come, come let us, let us walk, walk in, in the light, light of the Lord. Lord. Come, come let, let us, us go up to the mountain of the, of the Lord. Lord during this Advent season. season. Let, Let us, us learn, learn of God's, God's ways and walk in God's paths. You may be seated. So, a lot of people ask, we've heard the phrase, but a lot of people ask, what is the hanging of the greens? You know, why do we do it? Uh, what does it mean? You know, the thing about it is, is, this is an ancient custom. This is something that predates even Christ. So this is not something we created because of Christ, much like the Christmas tree, but it's something that's been around even before Christ. It was something that communities did. They would bring in, you know, the greenery from the evergreen trees uh, and the branches that, that would help sustain them, you know, the freshness of them, the, the reminder of life, even during the dark days of winter. And this, this tradition carried out even through the Christian era. You know, it's something that we held on to, and we made it a Christian symbol. So what this meant was that churches, homes, stores, any other places of business, they would do, do things like this. They would decorate with the evergreens to remind themselves of the life cycle. So for hundreds of years, the church has led the way with the remembrance of Christ the incarnation through the evergreen. You know, and we do this in the church during the Advent season, which actually begins today. At this time, we're preparing for the one who has come and who we expect to return. He's come into our lives in numerous ways and in various times and places, and he is the one who will come again. We prepare our hearts. We make room again for the Messiah, and hanging the greens, we share with Christians throughout the ages the memory and anticipation of Christ's coming. We decorate our church with these symbols. The everlasting life, love, joy, hope, and peace. So even our decorations proclaim that Jesus is born. God is with us. Praise his name forever. <laughs> Amen. All right. So everyone will please stand for this other short reading, and we will continue with our service. In the days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted, and all the nations shall come to it. Let us prepare God's house for his coming. Many people shall say, "Come, uh, shall come and say, let us go up to the mountains of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. Let us prepare God's house for his coming. A shoot shall come out of the stump of Jesse, 
and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Let us prepare God's house for his coming. As the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall the Lord rejoice over you. As we begin the Christian year, we also celebrate the holy season known as Advent. It's a time when we prepare ourselves for the coming of our, our Messiah. Advent means coming. We celebrate these days of Advent, Advent in, except, in expectation and preparation for Christ's revival. revival, revival excuse me. <coughs> Through the centuries, Christians have observed a time of waiting and expectation before celebrating the birth of the Savior at Christmas. The Advent season is a time of reflection and preparation, but its mood is joyful. Advent has been enriched by Christian tradition to reflect its distinctive Christian meaning. It proclaims a revelation of God's love as expressed in Christ's birth in a humble stable. His sacrificial death on the cross and his coming again as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Advent means innkeeper, innkeepers out of all of us, asking each of us to make room in our hearts for the revival uh, of the Christ, the King. Let us today prepare him in our hearts and our lives and our homes. Please stand and turn to page 77. We'll sing all the verses of Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Please stand. A star in the sky, carols in the evening, a candle in the window, a wreath on the door, mistletoe hung high, poinsettia aflame with brilliant color, gifts beneath a lighted tree, 
friends around the holiday table, families reunited in love, church bells ringing. This is a Christmas in America. Though similar to Christmas celebrations in other countries, America has its traditions and flair, rich treasures of custom and tradition woven into a pattern with our own country's threads, giving to us the colorful pageantry of our Christmas celebration. Let us listen to the lessons of the years and the centuries, not just to impressions of the moment. The images of the present and the biblical story are often discouraging. War, hate, famine, epidemics, a Caesar on his throne, a Paul in prison, Christians being persecuted. But now, after the centuries, the Caesar is gone. Paul is a symbol of faith and Jesus, the truth and the light, is reaching out to every nation. Let us, through the great traditions of our faith, join the shepherds of Bethlehem, the wise men from the east, and the seekers throughout the ages to welcome the one who came at Christmas. Let us at Christmas tide bring our gifts to him, and may the message of our songs be, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace and goodwill to peoples everywhere. And the most universal feature of Christmas is the use of evergreens in churches and homes. Among, among ancient Romans, evergreens were an emblem of peace, joy, and victory. The early Christians placed them in their windows to indicate that Christ had entered the home. Holly and ivy, along with pine and fir, are called evergreens because they never change color. They are ever green, ever alive, even in the midst of the winter. They symbolize the unchanging nature of our God and they remind us of the everlasting life that is ours through Christ Jesus. Under Christian thought and sentiment, holly became widely used in church celebrations. Holly was considered as the burning bush or a symbol of Mary whose being glows with the Holy Spirit. The red berries represented the blood drops from the cruel thorns and the crown of Jesus. In Isaiah 60, 13, we find these words, The glory of Lebanon shall come unto you, the fir tree, the pine tree, and the box together, to beautify this place of your sanctuary. Our forefathers called the procuring of these evergreens bringing home Christmas. We pray today as evergreens are placed in windows, on doors, hung from the balcony and throughout our church, that all who enter and leave will receive a blessing and know that they symbolize the unchanging nature of our God and they remind us of the everlasting life that is ours through Christ Jesus. Please turn to page 88 and stand and we'll sing the first and third verses of Hark the Herald Angels. Please stand.
Today, the Christmas tree is the center of our festivities. Glittering with lights and ornaments, it is a part of the beauty and meaning of Christmas period. There are several legends and stories about the Christmas tree. The first use of the Christmas tree was in medieval German paradise plays held outdoors in preparing the creation of humankind. The tree of life was a fir tree decorated with apples. Later, other ornaments were hung upon them, such as flower papers, flowers, and gilded nuts. In England, branches or whole trees were formed or forced into bloom indoors for Christmas period. From these beginnings, the use of the tree at Christmas was established. Martin Luther was perhaps the first to use a lighted tree. The story is told that on one Christmas Eve, Martin Luther wandered outdoors, became enraptured with beauty's starry skies. Its brilliance and loveliness led him to reflect on the glory of the first Christmas Eve as seen in Bethlehem's radiant skies. Wishing to share with his wife and children the enchantment he had built, he cut from the forest an evergreen glistened with snow and took it home. He placed it upon candles to represent the glorious heavens he had seen. The use of the candle-lighted tree spread to all Europe. Then America came to regard it as a central ornament of Christmas. Our church Christmas tree is adorned with many handmade ornaments that have been part of the tree for many years. Many of the ornaments have special meanings relating to the birth of Christ and his crucifixion. Please take time and examine the tree and see the many different ornaments. Please stand. Words on the screen. Christmas greenery reflects European traditions, but one colorful plant, which looks like a flaming star, the poinsettia, is a native to the American continent. It was named after Dr. Joel Robert Poinsett, an ambassador to Mexico who first introduced it to the United States in 1828. The people of Mexico and Central America called the brilliant tropical plant the flower of the holy night. The poinsettia is a many-pointed star that has become a symbol of the star of Bethlehem. Today, we enjoy the beauty of 120 poinsettias, all red. The poinsettias are given in honor and or memory of those we love, honor, and respect. Turn to page 87 and we'll sing all the verses of Joy to the World. Please stand.
both the visual and performing arts have always been important ways to communicate the Christian faith. The use of music has helped believers understand their godly hope. Other forms of visual art have been used from the beginning to help express various aspects of the Christian doctrine and life. Look at the red banners that you see hanging on the walls of our sanctuary today. They represent the colors of Christmas and our praises to our King of Kings. Colors, altar pyramids, or coverings, and banners are some of the most important visual ways Christians have used to express their faith in worship. The objective in covering the communion table with cloths of various colors was to help focus the attention of worshipers on the special nature of Christ as the perfect sacrifice. In the early days of Christian worship, Advent and Christmas were seen as somber times, much like Lent is today. Purple table co covers were used to show were used to show of Christ's kinship, but the mood was still somber. As Christians began to share their celebration of Christmas with their non-Christian neighbors, they began to focus on the joy of the Christmas event. As the emphasis of Christmas began to change to one of joyful celebration, the color used also changed to express Christ the King in that more happy way. The color green symbolizes the renewal of vegetation and in general of living things and the promise of new life. It is used for the season of Epiphany between Transfiguration Sunday and the beginning of Lent and for ordinary time between Trinity Sunday, the first Sunday after Pentecost, and the beginning of Advent. The color white symbolizes purity, holiness, and virtue, as well as respect and reverence. White is used for all high holy days and festival days of the church year especially the seasons of Christmas and Easter, as well as during baptism and marriage. Today, we change our altar pyramids from green to white as we celebrate the beginning of Advent and the celebration of Christ's birth. Please stand and we'll sing page 76, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, verse 1 and 2.
some captive is Friel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God symbolized not only by the four-week period of preparation but also the lighting of the, an Advent candle in an Advent wreath on each Sunday of the season. The flame of each new candle reminds us, the worshipers, that something is happening and something more is still to come. The candles are arranged in a circle to remind us of the continuous power of God which knows neither beginning nor ending. There is also symbolism in the colors of the candles. The three purple candles symbolize the coming of Christ from the royal line of David. He is coming as the King of Kings as well as the Prince of Peace. The pink rose candle is to be lighted on the fourth Sunday of the Advent season. This candle represents joy. The large white candle in the center is known as the Christ candle and points to Jesus as the Christ, the light of the world. A progression is noted in the lighting of the candles of the Advent wreath each Sunday. Each candle symbolizes various aspects of our waiting experience. This is the first Sunday in Advent. Today we light one purple candle. This is the candle of hope. Advent is a time of waiting and hoping. We wait for the day when we celebrate again the birth of Jesus. When we look at the first candle, we remember God's promise to send a Savior to the people. When we listen to our scripture reading, we hear that the prophet Isaiah wrote about God. God is the potter who molds us. When we read the Gospels, we see that God is loving and just. God brings peace. This gives us hope. While we wait for Jesus' birth on Christmas Day, we remember that Jesus helps us know God's love for us. For a child will be born for us, a son will be given to us, and the government will be on his shoulders. 
He will be named Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace, Isaiah 9, 6. In this scripture, we find the message and meaning of Christmas. Isaiah the prophet gave five awe-inspiring names of our Lord that encourage us, thrill us, and fill us with hope at the Christmas season. Wonderful. When he did his many miracles, the, the scripture says, the people wondered. Counselor, the people said, no one ever spoke that way that this man does. The mighty God, he is the God-man. He said that he and the Father are one. The everlasting Father, it was by him, the living word, that all things were created. He is the designer of the whole universe. The Prince of Peace, there will never be lasting peace on earth until he comes again to reign in righteousness. But he is also the Prince of Peace in other ways. None can have peace with God apart from him and the peace that he made through the blood of his cross. The full meaning of these words from Isaiah should give us enough strength, hope, and joy to face any crisis, endure any sorrow, and meet any temptation. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, and for the words of Isaiah the prophet who spoke of the promise that he saw far off coming, but died without having obtained it, so that through us and through your Son we be made perfect. Thank you for the Christmas season and everything that is to come, and help us to live out each day knowing that the promise has been fulfilled and we can rest in the hope that is your Son, Christ Jesus. Amen. Page 103, we'll sing the first and third verses. Please stand. Christmas celebrations, gift giving has been a part of the season. The wise men gave out their treasures and the shepherds gave of themselves. Both expressed the gift of God in giving Christ as the Savior of the world. Unique in our history of generous givers is the story of St. Nicholas, Bishop of Myra and Lucia, in the fourth century. He is reputed to have been wealthy, his emblem being three purses and three golden balls. This was a symbol of rich Italian families of this time. The good bishop gave his money away secretly, secretly to those he found in need. He was deeply interested in young people, giving his wealth especially to maidens whose lack of a dowry was affected by their matrimonial future and to giving boys. Gifts of unknown sources commonly attributed to him and parents customarily, customarily gave him credit for their gifts to their children. The discovery of his generos generosity is said to have been made by the family of three dowerless daughters. The eldest two each received from the chimney 
on successive nights a substantial gift of gold with her name on it. The father resolved to watch and see their generous, who that generous uh, benefactor could have been. His vigil revealed the good-natured St. Nicholas as the donor of the gifts, and his name survives today as the human embodiment of unselfish giving. Hanging up our stockings in pleasant anticipation of Santa's gifts may have originated from the fact that the maidens of the Bishop of Myra needed in expecting a dowry from the good Saint, Nic Nic Saint Nicholas suspended a stocking to catch the money purse, the generous bishop was sure to drop down the chimney. Gift giving <coughs> continues as a big part of our Christian Christmas tradition. Our children bring gifts today and place around our tree. Page 113, verse 1 and 2. Please stand. Christmas joy naturally overflows into music. About the 4th century AD, bells first pealed forth in glad song at Christmas. Of all our Christmas symbols, the bells have experienced the fewest changes. Church bells, which have gladdened the hearts of people throughout the ages, are said to have been originated by Bishop Paulinus of Nola in Campania, Italy, who died in 431 AD. From these two names has come the Latin word for bell. Medieval people have a tender feeling for bells. They are dedicated with prayers and regarded as almost living beings. Historical bells that have rung out the glad news at Christmas are the Emperor Bell in Moscow, the Great Bell of China at Peking, Big Ben of London, and the Liberty Bell of Philadelphia. However, it is church bells in every community around the world that have found their way into each of our hearts.
greatest gift of Christmas is, of course, the gift of God in Christ Jesus. All that we do at this holy season points us to that expression of holy love. Christ came as a baby in Bethlehem, God's gift at Christmas. As Christians, we seek to pass on our heritage to our children, to those who, by faith in Christ, become part of the family of God. It is through the work of the Holy Spirit in your life and mine that help us accomplish this. Please bow your hands. Oh God, you have caused this world to shine with the illumination of the true light. You have given us your only begotten Son to take our nature upon him to reveal to us your glory and grace. As you have given the gift of, and love, may we receive it with joy. Grant that we, being regenerate and made your children by adoption and grace, may daily be renewed by your Holy Spirit. Grant us, we pray, that as we have known the mystery of the light upon earth, so may we also reflect that light to a darkened world. Jesus, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Now may the God who has called us to live in hope and expectation go with you as you journey in faith toward the new future created by God's love that has dwelt and continues to dwell among us and in us. Go in his grace and in his peace. Oh God, we pray that as this service has transformed our place of worship for the Advent season, that you will help us transform our hearts to share this special season with those who have yet to know you. If everyone would, please rise to your feet as we close. We're going to close today uh, with our benediction being the Lord's Prayer. I ask that we all read it together. And please have a glorious and wonderful day. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive our debtors, and trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Thank you.